Are you also tired of the endless cycle of guesswork when it comes to adjusting the height of multi-unit temporary cylinders? I was tired as well, so I created a digital library to put an end of this frustration, allowing you and me to adjust the height of each temp cylinder digitally. Don't let the guesswork slow you down. With this library, the days of tedious rescanning and modifications of the designs are gone. Now you can accurately measure and visualize the correct height of each temp cylinder in your very first design, saving you valuable time and effort. The order forms are a regular all on four order form with an atomic rack sub and an atomic pontex. The library is called MDT Custom Temp Cylinders, and you have the choice between three different scan bodies the DES iOS scan body, the True Abutment scan body, and if you don't have any scan bodies available, you can also use the temp cylinders as well. Just screw them onto the multi-unit abutments, scan them in and use them as temp cylinders. Choose from different heights and alignment works very, very easy. A little trick, what I usually do because the surface is very shiny of these tie bases, I'm sandblasting them to get rid of the shiny surface. You can select from different heights and I cut them down at the lower end of the tie bases so you give it a very nice insertion into the material. Double check if the orientation of the scan bodies correctly and align them. You can download the library from my Patreon page. I have the link in the description. The next steps are very easy. For example, the emergence profile, all you have to do, click next on each side. And one of my favorite tools in ExoCAD is probably the chain mode. The chain mode makes it extremely easy to design a full mouse case in a matter of a couple of minutes. What I love about the chain mode is that I can copy one side to the other. In the button bottom step, we don't have to do anything. Same with the freeform mode. What we want to concentrate on is the adapt to preamp. Here I'm going to check exclude selected parts and from the menu, I'm going to select mark by click. Then I'm going to isolate only the upper arch and I'm going to click on each tools. Then I'm going to verify that only the teeth are selected and not the tissue. I'm going to repeat the same thing with a lower arch and double check if everything is selected. Now I'm going to invert the marking so the tissue is getting excluded. I'm going to click on model adapt teeth and the magic begins. After, After the, the adaption to the preamp has been completed, completed I can, I can now go into, into the freeform mode and adjust the design. I'm going to go into free and adapt and adjust the occlusion. I'm going to set the settings to 0.1 and I'm going to adapt it first on the lower and then 0.1 on the up. So I have a total of 0.2 adjustments for charges. Now I'm going to set the insertion directions for my virtual workshop buttons. I'm going to repeat it on the lower arch and when everything is completed, I can go and move forward with the gingival design. The gingival designs are straightforward design that we know from all of our videos that we did from all of our designs. I'm going to bring it up so I don't create a concave surface. And then I'm going to move into the gingival freeform. And when we go into the gingival freeform design, we can already see the problem that we have with guessing the height of multi-unit temp cylinders. When we measure the total height from the base of the temp cylinders to the height of the tissue, we can measure here in this example, it's 8.7 millimeter. We can then easily swap it out to an eight millimeter tie base to make it not come out of the incisal or not come out of the occlusal of the teeth. I can do the same thing with other sides. I can change the temp cylinders from one side to the other, especially in the anterior region where we don't have much space. In this, in this case, case, for example, the gingival height is very limited and I measure it. I'm going to go to the flush with screw. Flush with screw is about 4.1 millimeter height and the screw is right at the tie base. 
At this point, I want to say a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters who make it possible for this channel to move forward. A special thanks goes to the Tooth Harvester, Volley Rene, who is a VIP member, and thank you so much for your support. One thing I highly recommend is having a pre-up on all All On 4 cases. You import it into your design and you align it with your scans. That way you can right from the beginning when you align the scan bodies, you can define and prepare your case with the right height of temp cylinders. You don't have to go through all the steps in the gingival design and change it out there. Even though nothing is wrong with that, you can still do it. But if you have a pre-up, you can save your time, you can save some steps and do it right from the beginning. In this example, all temp cylinders are always 12 millimeters long. They come like this from the factory. Now we can cut it down to the certain height that we want. I always go to the height of the tissue. If you have a pre-up, go to the height of the tissue. In this example, it's nine millimeters. Click on the analog. Then you go back to the detect implant position and you can change the height. Very, Very predictable and visual results right from, from the beginning of the start. You're, you're setting yourself up for success from, from the beginning. beginning. Now let's go back to our free form gingival design. The first thing I'm gonna do is adding some material. Therefore, I'm gonna go to a free and the add and remove sign. I have the brush size and the strength at medium, and I'm gonna fill out the areas where the tie bases are intersecting with the gingival. You can be a little bit more rough here. It's really easy to smooth it out later on. Then under anatomic, I'm gonna go with small region and fill out the embrasures. If you don't want to go through this hassle with all the gingival design, just change your order form to digital wax up. No, you're going to scan it. Therefore, you have to have pre-approved pre-up scans that you import. Let the wax up calculation run and the free form will adapt it really nicely to the surfaces of the arches. Now we can generate our virtual wax up scan. This is basically merging the teeth and the gingival to one solid object. Then we're gonna go to free form and I'm gonna go to the smoothing area and select the brush size and strength at a medium size. Hold the shift button to flatten it. Then create a smooth area on the integral surface. Make sure you don't hit the CJ, the cervical, cervical enamel, enamel junction, junction. But otherwise you have to use the small brush tool to redefine the CJs. Smooth out, don't create any undercuts, don't create any concave areas. This is an all on four case, so we wanna create convex areas. Here we can see we have a nice intersection with the tie base into the material. The cement gap is set at 0.2, but it allows it for printing and allows it for milling to be really clean and the tie base is intersecting in the right way. If, if you, you now see that you have some areas where the tie base was chosen a little bit too short, short, you can still change it. Go in there, and change it to a 6 millimeter for example. We use the flush. Then we're gonna go to the score design. I always click off here and OK. That's all you have to do in the score hall. And then we can go to merge the restoration to finish it up. Then you can go ahead and print or mill your restoration depending on your workflow and cut the tie bases to the specific height that you designed it in the software. It becomes a very predictable and visible workflow that makes it easy for your technicians to finish the product. The interface in the material is really clean. Unlike if you scan it in, you have all these impressions of the tie base in the material, which can make it difficult for the mills and difficult for the tie base to fit into the restoration at a later point. The base of the tie base fits perfectly into the material. It makes it a very clean workflow. I hope you like this video and you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get updated on all future videos. The library you have seen here, you can download on my Patreon page. Another way to get it is to get it for free. Therefore, just leave a comment in the comment section and after two weeks after releasing this video, I will randomly pick a winner and send them the library. Until then, 
stay tuned.